Good morning, people. This is Mick Brew, MUFC Realist TV. Having my little big brew somewhere traveling mobily in Thailand. It is actually my wedding anniversary, and I promise not to do any content, but it is difficult. It is difficult when Manchester United is your second family and you are so passionate because there's been a lot of things that's been going on uh, off the pitch and on the pitch this week and upcoming looking forward as well. Of course, we're talking about the conspiracy regarding Manchester United and the Ref Association. The fair stick that we've been getting from the refs ever since that uh, derby game 13th of January when we played City, where Marcus Rashford was given that VAR decision and scored the goal. Ever since then, the Press Association has been writing about the, um, you know, how easy it is to be Manchester United and get VAR, Penandes and all that stuff. And of course, it's been influenced by referees. Um, you know, we, 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 of course, we're talking about Andrew Mariner twice being sending off or be influenced in sending off our star player, Casemiro, who, by the way, played 500 professional games before with Real Madrid and never even received a red until came to Prem. So one can sort of dilute that there is a conspiracy against Manchester United and maybe it is a league PTSD that we were so dominant for 15 years with Sir Alex that some rivals are scared that we are actually coming back. I'm not going to dive into that other than to review the scissor tackles, which according to my opinion is more dangerous than the stud red card rule. This is something that the ref associations needs to sort of uh, oversee for next season at least, barring that these injuries can ruin a player's career. Manchester United currently have three key players out based on these tackles. We're talking about Donny van der Beek with a knee, Christian Eriksen we know with an ankle, and the latest is Alejandro Garnacho. That's about it. That's all I'm going to say about this. Uh, we need to move on as a team, as a collective, as a United fan base as well. What's brewing in the background as well is, of course, the sales takeover. We all know by the media and the group that there's at least four shortlisted bidders that's been invited to come to uh, Manchester for talks with John Murtaugh and the Rainey Group, etc., etc., to fine-tune the bid. It's kind of like an auction, you know, up the bid. Um, the ones that's been gone public might not be the one that win the bid in general, that is Qatar, Altani, of course we know, and Sir Jim Ratcliffe. But what's interesting is that we don't really know who is the other two in the background. So that's what I'm saying, keep your powder dry. It's uh, my stance on this is always been glazes out, not who will actually win the bid, who is like, you know, Qatar in or Sir J Jim, Jim Ratcliffe in, as long as they, you know, buy the club and clear the debt and invest in the sporting infrastructure to make Manchester United great again. Um, you know, of course, we've got to talk about moving forward. We have a game to play tomorrow in Seville. We have a really nice 4-1 cushion aggregate going into that game in Seville. It's not going to be easy. Do I see Eric Ten Hag doing any rotation? Yes, I think he will. Will it be a total revamp roto rotation to rest some players? No, I don't think so, because you cannot be complacent. You still have to secure to move forward in the next round of Europa League, let's say semi-finals, quarter-finals and that stuff. So this is my predicted lineup. I see the back line being following. I see Melassia coming and replacing Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw will be given a rest. In terms of the centre-back pairing, this is what most people will probably be shocked what I have to say, but I think he will give uh, Varane a rest and Lissandra Martinez a rest, and I think we will see Maguire and Lindelof. And, of course, Daloy will start on the right-hand side instead of Aaron Van Bissaka. In the midfield, though, this, barring that Casemiro has been now suspended for four games, it is on any given Sunday that Casemiro will start as his holding midfielder. But in front, will Bruno be given a rest? Maybe. 
possible combination what Eric Ten Hag will line up is kind of the formation of Casemiro, Fred and potentially as a number 10 a Jaden Sancho but so far we've seen Bruno playing every minute every second of the game so I think it still will be Bruno um, then moving forward in the attacking line um, Marcus Rashford of course will start the first 45 minutes to assure that we actually score the first half on the left with on the top as the number nine I see a what Weghurst on the right though it would be quite interesting because Anthony's been starting but Palestri has been knocking on the door so I think Palestri will give the nod to start in terms of score prediction I don't see this being a freight train of high scoring. I see it as a 2-1 Manchester United, possibly a draw at 1-1 at Seville. But guys, let me know what you think. Leave a comments below who you think will be starting and what is your score prediction. And we should see you on Thursday for the post-match review, calling a spade a spade with Jay Daly. This is Mick Ruby on the fly somewhere in Thailand. Please like and subscribe to this video and don't forget to be nice to each other on the socials. See us. Bye for now.